What you see here is the complete set of walls for the Zombicide Black Plague game. Uh, before you actually lay them out on your board, it's easiest if you go ahead and sort these pieces into different lengths of walls. What I've got here is I've got the three inch walls with the doorways in the front and the rest behind. Here's the four inch walls with the doorways in the front, the rest behind. Five inch walls don't have any doorways. Here's the six inch walls with doorways, six inch walls without doorways. And these are the seven inch walls that have kind of double doorways. There's two wall sections that have double doorways. Then I have the uh, doors that are in the back here. For the blue and the green door, I basically just took a normal door and painted on it. Uh, that way you can kind of tell the difference between a, a green door and a blue door from the regular red doors that are in the set. Now let me give you some idea of how the walls lay out on the game board. You'll notice that all of the walls are in one inch increments. Uh, there's no half inch increments. In other words, we've got a, a three inch wall section, a four inch wall section, a five inch, a six inch, and a seven inch. There is no three and a half inch or four and a half inch. And you think that might cause a problem. But because of the way the board is structured and the way we arrange these, it's really not that much of a problem. We'll kind of fudge things a little. In other words, if we want a doorway on the front, we can put a three inch door right here and we can put a seven inch wall section right beside it. And you'll notice that it lines up just about like there. So that looks like it works pretty well for lining up. But let's say, uh, what if we uh, didn't have a three inch? What if we wanted to use a four inch? Well, if we used a four inch wall section here, the seven inch one's gonna stick over a bit. Okay, well, let's not use a seven inch. Let's use a six inch. So the same walls, we have a four inch across the front and a six inch across the back, and it still works. And you'll notice that the wall with the four inch here sticks into the road just a little bit. Or with the three inch one, it's kind of back just a little bit. But that's okay because these kind of float on the surface. There are occasions when you do this and when you put two together, you might have maybe a half inch gap back here. But honestly, I don't know if anybody is going to worry about a half inch gap back here. As long as the walls separate the street from the buildings, that's all we want them to do. Now here I'm going to demonstrate the best way to lay out these uh, Zombicide game board tiles uh, and put the walls on them. Now, I have not planned, pre-planned anything here. I've just got the stack of them, and there's, I think there's some other, other tiles in here too. What I'm going to do is I am just going to throw these down uh, and try to uh, show you how these would go together uh, to make, uh, make Zombicide walls here. So let's see. Uh, let's just take this and uh, let's see. We've got a square over here. Maybe we've got one with like more buildings in it or something. That one kind of goes uphill. Let's see. If this one went like this, then we're going to have nothing back there. Maybe. Uh, let's try this. Let's uh, throw this one here. I'm going to put that one there. Well, that doesn't work, does it? Let's see. We turn it around. Oh, let's put the big building right there. And then uh, this is a dead end. This comes out here. That comes over there. And we'll put... Uh, well, that T doesn't work there, does it? Let's see. Well, let's switch it around. Let's put the T right here. And then we'll put the uh, big building right over here. There we go. So it kind of comes around. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's put the square here. That looks a little bit better. It gives us kind of a strip of buildings here. And then we've got uh, here. So this would give us sort of a strip of uh, buildings and a strip of buildings around and one little building there. Uh, I think that'll work out uh, all right. Okay, well, what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of set these aside. Let's say that this is the uh, layout you want your game board to be, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to lay these walls out to a little, so they'll all fit. The next thing you want to do is after you get your game board laid out is you got to put the doors down first. Uh, so we're going to take our doors and 
all of the walls here I've got plans on the website that you can follow and know exactly what go wall goes where for the missions that are in the book. But if you create your own, let's say we've got uh, a doorway here. Now doorways open into these main sections. So if a doorway is over a little or that way a little, it's not going to matter. As long as it opens into that section, you're fine. So I'm going to put a doorway here. I'm just going to put a doorway here. Uh, let's say that this little room over here has a doorway. That's three. Uh, I'll put a doorway here and a doorway here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Uh, we'll put a doorway across the way here, six. Let's put one down at the end over here for seven. And let's see, I'm going to put a doorway. Let's see, uh, we'll, put one, we'll put one right here for eight. Uh, there we go, and just for the fun of it, I'll put a doorway across from the other doorway. Okay, a lot of the missions have like 12 doorways or so. So, we're going to start by just laying out the doorways on the board. The next thing you want to do is use your wall sections that have the doorways on them. And I would start with the longest sections first. In other words, uh, start with your 6 inch wall sections that have a doorway. And what you can do is you can take it and put it down here and say, okay, we've got a six inch section with a doorway that goes right here. Okay, well there's one of our doorways right there. So I'm just gonna drop that right there. And you could just put the doorway in front of it if you want because we may rearrange things as we go. So use long sections for doorways. This double one here, these uh, seven inch hallways have kinda got double doorways on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put a double doorway, seven inch one right there to take care of those. Uh, let's get rid of some more six inch long ones. Let's say, well, that's too long to fit there. We're gonna have to use a short doorway. So I'm gonna put one, let's say, right about here to take care of this doorway. And we've got one down here. Uh, let's see, if I try using a four inch doorway, that looks like it's gonna extend back beyond. We might be able to use it, but I'm thinking a three inch doorway would probably be better. So I'm gonna put a three inch doorway back in here. And then we've got a doorway over here. Let's go with another six inch doorway. Uh, let's put one right, uh, right about there. Okay, so we got a six inch doorway. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got one here. Let's try the, uh, let's try the four inch doorway there. Yeah, I think a four inch doorway will work pretty good. We've got a long one right here too, don't we? So we will put another six inch doorway right here. That'll take care of that door. And then we got this one here. For this one here, I'm just going to throw a 4 inch doorway here. Always try to fit the longest doorway in first. Because you can always stuff a shorter doorway in and fill it with something else. Uh, but if you have a long section with a doorway, you're never going to fit it into a spot like this. So always start with the long doorways first. Then, the next thing we do is fill in with wall sections and try to figure out what works. Okay, let's start over here. Now this wall section can move out, it can move back a little bit. Let's see what it's going to take to fill that. It looks to me like something like a 4 inch section would probably do it. So if we put a 4 inch section right there, then we got to fill in here. Let's see, will a 6 inch fill in there? Oh yeah, look at that. The 6 inch. Now it looks like the 6 inch kind of scoots back a little bit. And we can see a little bit here. Well, um, it's really kind of up to you. I think it'll probably work okay. What I'm going to do is scoot it forward just a little bit. And we're going to have just, you know, a quarter inch of space back here. But nobody's going to notice a quarter inch of space back there. So that's going to take care of the walls for this particular one here. And just for the fun of it, let's say this is the bad, the last place you want to go. I'm going to mark that with a green door just, just because, you know. And this one over here, we've got a four inch doorway here. I'm thinking a 3 inch and a 3 inch would probably fit in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a 3 inch wall here. We're going to drop it in here and a 3 inch wall here. And we're going to drop it in here. And I think that will look pretty nice for that one right there. Okay, so we've got our door there. Okay, we've taken care of that one. We've got a doorway going across here. Now there's a couple things we can do here. We can take a 3 inch wall, put it on the inside, and I'm thinking that we would fill in right here because if you had a four inch wall, I think that would be too long. I mean, we could put a four inch wall on the end and then put a wall in between here. Well, actually, maybe that'll work better. Let's do that. Let's put a four inch wall there. And then we're gonna fill in here with uh, probably a four inch or a three inch. You know, we can move this back and forth a little. As long as this doorway stays in this section, it doesn't really matter how far we move it. 
Let's see what a 4 inch would do. A 4 inch is going to shove it back quite a ways. Uh, it would shove it back here. But yeah, that would work. That would work because this doorway still relates to this section and you'll know which doorway it is. If it really bothers you, uh, maybe go for a 3 inch one. Maybe a 3 inch one will go here and we'll shove that over. Yeah, that's probably a little better. That gets that doorway a little more centered right here over this section that's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got this doorway right here and we've got this middle section here. Let's go on across. You want to fill a lot of space, let's use a long one. Let's take this seven inch one and fill space and then what we've got left here is probably, what, four inch? Uh, four inch works out and it extends over a little bit, but not horrible. Uh, I wonder what would happen if we used a three inch there. If we used a three inch and then put something on the outside, yeah, I think that's probably going to work a little better. Okay, well let's save the four inch to go here. Okay, we'll put a three inch one here, and now all we've got to do is connect from here to here. So let's start with long pieces. Let's use some long pieces up here. So I'm going to put a seven inch right here, and then we've got a four inch here. It's like, well, you know what? What about a five inch? Let's let's try. We haven't used the five inches for much of anything. I'm going to take a five inch piece right here, a five inch here, and a five inch here. Wow, that works out just fine. I have found that a lot of wall sections end up being about 10 inches. And it's kind of a funny thing, just when you lay these out, you'll kind of see patterns and things on how some of these works. But 10 inches is a common length that comes up. So a five and a five works good, a six and a four works good, a seven and a three works good. All of those will give you the length that you need for that. Okay, this looks like a three inch wall here. Okay, I'm going to uh, put that in like that. And then we've just got to finish off the last wall. Oh, oh, almost forgot this. This little square, usually uh, I think it works best if you've got a four inch and a four inch, and then you've got a, a three inch and a three inch. That's usually the best combination for this little chunk right here. Uh, so that'll work like that. And we got our door going in right there. And we got this door going in right here. Oh, we gotta fill this one. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, we've got a six inch here, and it looks like a four inch probably here. Yeah, see what I was saying about 10 inches? 10 inches is kind of a length. So a six and a four fills it, seven and a three will fill it. Right here, it looks like a three inch would probably go here pretty well. And now we're just gonna try to fill in the rest of this right here. So I'm just gonna grab a long piece. And what do we got here? That's uh, We're going to be a little bit short here. Let's take and use a longer piece than that. Let's see if that'll fit. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is going to go here. That's going to go across here. And just for looks on the video, I'm going to turn this around here. So we've got a doorway here. We've got a doorway here. That's just going to fit like there. And then all we got, it looks like, is to fill that little section right there. Let's see, is that going to be about, uh, yeah, there we go. Now, we've got like a quarter inch left over there, but hey, who's going to know? But now, all our walls are set up for the game. We've got our doors where we want them. And we've still got quite a few wall sections left over. So you can do an even larger board with it if you like. But that's the basis behind how the walls are arranged on the board. And all they really do is separate the street sections from the buildings. I'm not going to worry about, you know, subdividing these up, or th there's really no need for it. Um, it just, it, it adds a lot to the appearance of just separating the buildings from the street. Okay, this is a quick panorama of the Zombicide Black Plague wall set. Uh, the walls are actually set on top of the boards. This is the last quest in the book, which is Trial by Fire, and there are nine board sections for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pan around so you can see the different, uh, different areas on this. And just some different views of the wall set with the walls on there. You'll notice that the walls are all just separating the buildings from the street. And that's, that's pretty much all they're doing. Um, the painted miniatures here were uh, done by Nightwatch Games. And I'm not sure if they painted them, but they're the ones who loaned them to me. So uh, I really uh, appreciate them uh, loaning them to me because it uh, 
makes the video a whole lot better when you see the see the painted miniatures in there. There's uh, enough wall segments to do this uh, last large layout here, and I think there's only two wall segments left over, a three inch and a four inch one. Uh, in a couple of places uh, where you have a door that you don't really need a door, you can fill it in with a uh, fill it in with a little uh, brick spacer, and that way you don't have an open doorway. Uh, if you do, uh, uh, when you do like go through a door, you uh, just simply kind of remove the door, and and then it'll be open from then on. These walls just kind of basically float around uh, on top of the board. And they're not a, uh, in some cases, uh, they'll may be a white, in some cases they may be away from the uh, uh, edge of the board just a little bit, but these lined up pretty good. I think there's only one side on here that didn't, uh, that, that's off by like a half inch from one inch to the other. Uh, but all of them actually did pretty well. So that's kind of a quick uh, pan around of this wall set set on there. And uh, I didn't even use all the doors. I think this Quest only uses about 9 of the 12 doors. And there's actually 14 doors in this whole set. But uh, that's a quick pan around of what this uh, set looks like.